So have you been thinking about the documentary? <laughs> God. My husband is obsessed with this topic. Okay, so are you planning to make a documentary? <laughs> He thinks that because in my past life I was a TV producer and in my current life I shoot constantly for our green-focused website, that I should make it into something bigger. But the problem with that is great stories don't make a documentary. It has to be something bigger. It needs to have a focus. And I just can't figure out what my focus should be. So I'm stuck. I love the concept of even just my moving to Spain, and Spain is so green in some ways compared to the U.S. I mean, everything's smaller here, the cars, the houses. So how big is your apartment? Four to seven meters quadrant. Our son sleeps here now. The footprint just feels smaller. I don't know, that's not the story. I mean, it's part of it, but it's not the story. For a while, I was sure I was going to do a documentary on my mother-in-law. Eso era lo que se usaba de, de brochas, se pintaba con cal, ¿eh? Sí. For a while, I followed her around with a camera everywhere. La levadura es un trozo de masa de pan de hace días. It's amazing how steeped in tradition and sustainability she is, without even realizing it. Le voy a poner Some of the old traditions are just, they were much more environmentally sustainable, and I think in this last century we've lost that. But I also don't think we can just go back to that. Tú sabes lo que esta tortilla, ring, ring, ring. Eso te machacaba vivo. Yeah. Hacen que hoy esto es un paraíso. Yeah. Hoy no se trabaja. And I don't think people go, want difficult now, and they're not going to sacrifice that much. So, what do they teach? I don't know. I mean, sometimes, to be honest, like the way I usually do stories, I usually look for like what they call golden bites, which are like these things people say that stick with you and you don't forget. There is talk that one day, because of the the shortage of things like fossil fuel. Um, the average consumer will not be able to fly. That comment stuck with me for a long time, maybe because flying is the Achilles heel of my well-meaning but well-scattered family. That's why we don't eat meat, because we fly so much. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I know. We're not willing to give up visiting our families. Yeah, so yeah. we decided so to give up something to, else. To I've told this story. I mean, I've talked about how I'm not flying this year and I'm video calling instead. Oh my goodness. Oh. But that's not a documentary. Oh nice, yeah, I'm gonna come close up. So what is it? I don't know, I love downshifting. It's about just spending less and consuming less and living on less and so that you can actually have more time to live. That's sort of what we're doing with our lives and at least I can try to personalize it and then take it bigger. You know, I think I need to ask you this question. What would you make the documentary about? We are right now in the United States and one of the mottos of this country is the pursuit of happiness. This topic is a bit loaded. <laughs> When I first vowed I could never marry him was when he told me he didn't want to be happy. Later he revised this to, I don't want to always be happy, and we married. But I don't trust his allegiance to this unalienable right. The main definition and the broadest definition of this particular pursuit of happiness has been always related to economical independence, to economical wealth, and to the ability or the right to buy private property as well as products. That. Even I, raised by parents who believed in frugality and the value of family above all else, chose economics over film studies as my major at Harvard because it felt a safer way to afford my happiness. Twenty years later, I regret that decision, and I'm not alone in questioning whether tying happiness to wealth and the accumulation of stuff is truly in our best interest. In the United States, people are more than twice as wealthy today as they were in 1957. But at the same time, the level of happiness, the number of people who say that they are very happy, has been flat. We're richer and richer and richer, and yet no happier. Happiness research isn't quite that simple, but there does seem to be growing evidence that those who choose an alternative road to happiness, like slow foodies, downshifters, neo-homesteaders, tiny house people, may be onto something. Some cultures, it's believed that the key to happiness is actually within and that the more you pair away, the closer you're going to get to that. But uh, in our culture, it seems that there's more of a philosophy of accumulation rather than subtraction. Before it was so clear, in order to be happier, you needed to be richer and accumulate more stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, this is not for to appear in a video. First of all, right. I'm not... This is kind of good notes. You just think there's a, a shift in values right now. 
we are not only in, a re, in an economic recession, but it's not that clear that we are looking for a bigger car and a bigger house and a bigger footprint, and that will make us happier. So that pursuit of happiness revisit could be our challenge in the documentary, right? I like the idea. Um, I just want to add one thing. I want to make this a little bit more open source. So I think um, I would like people to send in their ideas. So send in a video, upload it to the site, or just email me and I'll do a Skype video chat and record that. Um, so hopefully I'll hear from you about your ideas about this uh, so-called green stuff and how it affects your happiness. Okay.